Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And today we're going to talk about Carnival Cruise Line. Dylan successfully shorted the stock a couple times. I have. And then we also made some money on the bull side back during COVID. But we're going to talk about how it's coming up to a key area of resistance. And we're going to revisit the valuation of it on the longer term basis. <laughs> Stocks. This is a uh, this is becoming my Nicola stock, just over and over. I just keep short. Up. I just want to say this is my favorite captain of all time too. Yeah, captain. I mean it's a, it's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. So you know this this slide right here is from a previous presentation. So what I was trying to do is since uh, their business was changed so dramatically by the pandemic, they had to take a bunch of debt on. They had to issue a bunch of shares in order to stay in business because um, they were shut down for a while. And you know the kind of business dynamics have changed a lot. I wanted to try to find a way of comparing then versus now in a more equal basis. So what I settled upon was something called enterprise value. Enterprise value basically, it, you know, you're you're looking at the the total value of the business from like the shareholder side and then also the debt side. So it takes into account both. Um, basically, I calculated this at the end of their quarter from uh, it was like end of fiscal year 2019. Right. So right. pre-pandemic, they had about a 40.5 billion dollar enterprise value. Right. Now, we're going to update that as of t uh, basically that, you know, today's stock price with the end of the most recent financial quarter. Um, you know, February 28th was the most recent filing, you know, as far as like uh, end of quarter. They have one coming up probably this month, but this is the most recent numbers we have from them. So they have $32 billion in long-term debt compared to the, the $9.5 billion they had previously. Short-term borrowing is about the same. You have about $5 billion in cash. You know, they, they've used that that kind of debt to sit in their balance sheet. They did double basically the number of shares outstanding uh, from 600 million to 1.26 billion, yes. 1218 per share. That gives them a current enterprise value of 42.763 billion dollars. Uh, so when you compare that to the previous one, 40.583, it's actually more valuable in total enterprise value right now than it was pre-pandemic. Yeah. So <laughs> All right. that's huge, guys. Um, no one. I I actually um, know some people who put like in the hundreds of thousands of dollars in the stock at like 15 because they just see share price. It's more valuable now than it was before they took on the debt. That doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense. It's a terrible idea. And there's a possible recession coming up in the next year. That's why this is such an attractive short. That's why I've done it so many times. Yeah, exactly. And they, just to highlight, right, the, the share price was $45 a share and now it's 12, but yet yep. it's worth more on an enterprise value basis. Yeah, no like one's talking about that. No one's yeah. looking at that calculation. And look how tiny these chicken sandwiches are compared to Shaq. Yes. That's also another weird observation. <laughs> <laughs> like snacks. Uh, you know, they did have some good business things going. This is from their you know, like quarterly filing, right? They were finally turning cash flow positive. They were finally being able to start paying down some debt a little bit is what their hopes were. They did report a, a net loss, but you know, bookings were great. They had a great quarter as far as that goes. A lot of good stuff here, but. You know, still from a valuation standpoint, eh, there, there's two way more risk than you're being paid for. In my personal stupid guy opinion, we're going to get a little bit better insight. They haven't officially announced the earnings date for the next one, but sometime in the next couple of weeks, they're probably going to come out with their earnings and we'll get a good business update on them. Yeah. So it brings us to the trade. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> here, let me, before you do this, let me show where we're at. Yeah. So um, this bottom line here, this 1126, this is the line that I had used before. Um, cause it just kept on coming up and I also day trade, not good at it. Um, but you can just see the amount of people selling, like when it would hit this number, right? Um, I did a short here. It worked out pretty well. I think this was an earnings date. You can see it just dropped a disgusting amount. So mm -hmm. if we zoom in here, this was our last high. It's about 1261. Okay. And the market's kind of going crazy right now. You know, what, what's the saying? All boats are lifted. With the yeah, rising tide ocean. was all built. We're up thirty percent in a month. In case you you were curious. Oh was. my god, okay, <laughs> that's deserved. Um, so, as it approaches this twelve sixty one, there's a couple key levels, right? So there's twelve sixty one. Um, there's this twelve twenty two, which is kind of where we're at right now, and then thirteen just as a whole number. Um, those are all possible shorts. I short these with options. And what I do is I have a very rigid rule now after being burned so many times, I've finally gotten good at sticking to my stop loss, um, is 
I, I'll let's say if it hits 1270, I'm out. So if I enter a short at like 1240 with a put, let's say it's like five months out for ten dollars, because the length of time is so long, if it goes up 20 cents, you do not lose that much money. Just get out. You just you know, it, this is like a 20 to one risk to reward. It, it's <laughs> it's not a huge deal. Just just leave. And then if you have another opportunity later, fine. Like. We, we did a video earlier. I shorted the cues when they are at their recent high around 3.30, and then the video went crazy. I only lost 100 bucks, and it, it was a $3,000 return if it would have been right. So it's, it's worth it trades. You probably only have like a 20% success rate on these, but worth it for the risk to reward. So let me go back to That's how I do it. Yeah. But. I, I play things a little bit differently. This is closer to a 50-50. Basically, this is a bearish bet on their earnings report that they're going to have it sometime this month in the month of june so what the structure looks like is you're selling the ten dollar call expiring 6 30 and you're buying the 15 dollar call for, as a little bit of insurance so your max profit in this would be like 227 dollars max loss 273 and as long as uh ccl is at 12 27 or lower you should generate a profit yeah which is likely so um, I'm just, I get scared of the short term options. I don't like the theta decay. Make me yeah. nervous. So. In this case, you're hoping for the theta decay though, because you sold like the more valuable option. So you're like collecting that money up front. So, no, no, no. So I, I, um, I buy a put. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get you. Yeah. Th it makes more sense for this kind of style trade. To yeah. Do shorter term. Um, I buy a put, and that way, if I'm wrong on my level, it's I lose not that much money, right? The problem is you get wicked out a ton. When I say wicked, I mean, let's say my stop is at like 1270 and the level is at 1261. You'll have a day where it'll go like 1272 and then it tanks down to $10. You, you do get, that happens a lot, so. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys, so let us know what you think about this in the comments down below. Later.